You're watching ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Welcome to Southern California for Championship Sunday of the Wooden Legacy. We're here on the campus of Cal State Fullerton University. It's all a part of Feast Week here on ESPN, presented by Lowe's in our third place game featuring number 21 ranked St. Mary's and the Georgia Bulldogs out of the SEC. It's a matchup many thought might have been the title game matchup later tonight. Instead, this evening on ESPN2 at midnight Eastern, you'll see Washington State face San Diego State for the championship. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome inside Titan Gymnasium on the campus of Cal State Fullerton. Alongside Corey Williams, I'm Steve Quisson. Here's a rarity these days in NCAA college basketball. We feature two terrific big men who still happen to be around playing in college. They're both seniors. For St. Mary's, Jock Landale, one of the best big men on the West Coast, will dominate this season in WCC play. And for the Georgia Bulldogs, Yante Mayton. A superstar player who flirted with the NBA now back in a Bulldog uniform looking to have a big game tonight as they tip off against that big front line at St. Mary's house. Time for our starting lineups that are presented by Zales as we get set to go from inside tight gym. First five up on your screen, the St. Mary's Gales and Emmett Narr is a terrific point guard. Ford has had an outstanding tournament while Evan Fitzner has started every single game that he's played in a St. Mary's uniform. And for the Georgia Bulldogs, they still have some players under the weather. Jawan Parker is in for Etorian Jackson getting the start here in this third game. St. Mary's is in blue. Georgia is in white. Both teams won on Thursday and lost semifinal games on Friday. And for Georgia, they had several players under the weather came down with a virus. And they still got some guys Shaking that off, they did say there's a lot of Pedialyte that has been consumed here in Southern California for the Bulldogs. And a drive, and with a left hand, scored right there for St. Mary's. Right on cue is Jordan Ford, who said an outstanding tournament. He now has 29 points in two plus games. Boy, did he give him the whole package on that play. Inside out, a little hesitation all the way to the rim. St. Mary's is five and one, Georgia is four and one, and the Gales defense forces a Georgia turnover, and Ford back the other way, high off the window, no good. And back the other way, the Bulldogs with Parker driving in, and we've got a foul. We're talking about isolation, making the defender make a mistake. Just gets him totally off balance, takes Parker to school on that opening drive. Juwan Parker making the start in place of Etorian Wilridge, one of the players who was under the weather during the game against San Diego State on Friday, a game in which Georgia lost. Gave up too many points in the paint to SDSU. Meantime, Randy Bennett's team just has not played its typical defense. They let Washington State shoot nearly 60% on Friday. That's unheard of for a Randy Bennett coach team. Well, you got to defend, and this is a different type of season for the St. Mary's Ball Club. They come out with the national ranking in the AP polls. They are the hunted. Something new actually picked to finish ahead of the Zags, which I'm not sure. They're the champs until you've got to beat the champs, you know? So for them to be hunted, they have to come. Great pass, Dar. He's a terrific facilitator to Jock Landell and the 6'11 senior from Australia throws it down. Very few things are automatic, but Emmett Nahr is automatic on a ball screen. All you have to do is wait on the ball, he'll make you a superstar. Here's Parker, step back jumper on the baseline right over Nahr. Even at four, Juan how, Parker. Excuse me, how Georgia defends the ball screen will be so critical this evening because St. Mary's offense is disciplined. They space it out. They've got shooters. They've got a great inside player. You have to contain penetration. Emmett Nahr will rip you to pieces if you let him get in the lane. Great point. Here is Obede straight away. He was open at the free throw line and buries the jumper. Georgia with the early lead. Landell, a post touch against Ogbede. Backs in on him, and Ogbede knocked it out of bounds. And they're going to say Landell actually touched it last, so it'll be Georgia basketball. 
Georgia beat Cal State Fullerton in their opener, but had to overcome a slow start, a six-point deficit late, and then gave up the too many points in the paint to San Diego State on Friday and lost. With the, a trio of guys here, but under the weather, and one Mike Edwards, they had to leave back at the hotel. Hammonds over the top. Ogbede now working offensively against Landell. The double team came. Seven to shoot. We've seen Georgia be very patient with the shot clock the entire tournament. Jackson, who's having a great tournament, had it stripped out of bounds. He touched it last. Good turnover. Good defense either way by the Gales. Two seconds to go as that ball went out of bounds. Great position defense. Defend without fouling, especially late in the possession. You don't want to give a guy free throws. Randy Bennett was really down on his defense through the first six games of the year, even though they're five and one. And Nar, nope. Mandel trying for the offensive rebound, and Harker corrals the defensive rebound. And a travel. This is kind of the start that uh, Georgia had in their opener against Cal State Fullerton. A lot of first half turnovers. Mark Fox, ninth season at Georgia, looking for his 150th win. Speaking with Coach Fox after that game against Fullerton, happy. The big fella, better late than never <laughs> for Maiden to show up, make a few plays. Deontay Maiden's had a, uh, a big tournament. So has Turtle Jackson. That's going to be fun to watch. This is Evan Fitzner, the redshirt junior from San Diego, making his 75th consecutive start as the three-pointer in St. Mary's is up a point. Wonder if the Georgia big men are used to guarding the three-point line. They will have to do that tonight. As St. Mary's, with the exception of Landale, everyone can stroke it from downtown. Foul away from the ball down to the post. Well, St. Mary's defense has been outstanding the last two years, but this season, I mean, look at that, nearly 70 points and the NCAA rank of 134. And Washington State shoots nearly 60% on you. Well, there's a whole other factor at play, and we kind of touched on it earlier. You've got that bullseye on your back now. Yeah. You're a hunted team, and you're going to get everyone's best shot. So you have to step up defensively. Hammonds inside to Mayton, and the all-SEC preseason selection has his first bucket. Georgia out in front. Very important for Yante Mayton to protect that first foul and try to be out on the court as much as he can for this game. Fitzner blows right around and Claxton, and Claxton blocks it. He's had a number of blocks. Now he's showing his athletic ability bringing it down the floor. He looked, a little shaky. <laughs> he looked a little shaky on the point right there. He got it to a guard, which was a great play at the other end, a good block. Offensive foul. They're going to call Claxton right in front of us. Our first break of this third place game from the Wooden Legacy in Fullerton. Great freshman Rashawn Hammonds feeding perhaps the player of the year in the conference in Yonce mate. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Las Vegas. Explore now at visitlasvegas.com. By Gildan, love your dad but don't wear his underwear. Gildan, every thread counts. And by Dr. Scholes. Welcome back to Southern California. We're at Fullerton, not too far from the Hollywood sign. Georgia out in front of number 21, St. Mary's, in this third place game at the Wooden Legacy. West Coast Conference against the SEC. Randy Bennett, who just signed an extension for 10 years to coach at Moraga through 2027. His club has struggled defensively, but they have been uh, in the upper echelon of teams throughout the country. It doesn't matter if they're tucked away in tiny, beautiful little Moraga. You, ha you have had to have heard how good St. Mary's is in their pick this year to win the West Coast Conference. Contract extension was a no-brainer. Was no, no one's done more than he in the last season. It's hard making St. Mary's relevant. I don't care who you are. No one wants to go into Moraga to play. Great atmosphere, great school. What a battle there. Landell against Yante Maiton, and that is going to officially be a travel against Landell. Right here, Jock Landell's used to getting to the rim off his first and second dribbles right there. Doesn't make up his mind, shuffles both feet before he comes back to his right hand. Give me a great one-on-one -on -one post battle. Just the second turnover of the basketball game for St. Mary's. Back to what we talked about, their defense. They've lost Joe Rahan as Maiton gets the bucket. 
Joe Rahan was the West Coast Conference Defensive Player of the Year. He was a Boston College transfer, put in two tremendous years at St. Mary's. So losing that type of defender it takes a while to get people to buy into the system. He was a great defender because he wanted to be. Defense is a mentality. Guys, it has nothing to do with your shot or your size. If you want to get out and lock somebody down, you can. They just got to find that mentality and make sure guys take the responsibility. Guard your man, keep your man in front of you. And I'm sure that's what Coach Bennett and his staff are preaching. St. Mary's got nine of ten first place votes to win the conference. And look at Landale, the big fella. Pass with Mayton on him and hit a streaking gnar for the bucket. I got to say, I, as much as I like the Gales, I don't agree. I think the Zags are the champs until you beat the champs. So you, the coaches in the, in the voting, you know, they push St. Mary's out front, but it'll still come down to can they win at the kennel and will they defend the home court? <laughs> and they didn't last year. They were beaten by Gonzaga three times. One time at their place with game day there. Changing hands, driving in and scoring. Damn it, Nar. I love this kid. School is in session. That was a beautiful play. Rejects the screen, goes one on one, finishes with the off hand. Just a sensational player on, an, on a whole nother level. I mean, coaching is so easy when your guys understand. There's the back cut for the easy finger roll in the lane. And then you're just going to see a crossover, a look off, and a finish against the kid six foot nine with a wingspan. <laughs> Randy Bennett looking like coach of the year. The guys with that high basketball IQ out there. Well, I was talking to Jeff Turiel, the outstanding associate commissioner of communications for the WCC. He reminded me as Mayton goes to work again, even though they got nine of ten first place votes, Randy Bennett can't vote for himself, so he had to vote for Gonzaga. Got the other one. <laughs> Turtle Jackson, a career high 16 in game one versus Fullerton, followed it up with a career high 17 against San Diego State, having an amazing tournament. He's owned the wooden legacy right now. Great confidence going into the rest of the season. He's got his hands full tonight out there guarding Emmett Nahr. Being responsible to try to slow down this motion offense of the Gales. And going to work with a left hand on the uh, drive was Colin Neal. Open is Fitzner. He's already hit one. He'll make another one. Five or six players all touch the ball in a few seconds for St. Mary's. They pass up good shots to get great shots. That's what makes them so tough. So sound fundamentally, right? They get all the Australian players. They get them to stick around for five years. Redshirt their first year. By the time they're seniors, they're a well-oiled machine. Nearly knocked off Arizona in the second round last year. Gave the Wildcats all they could handle. Mayton. Oh, man. That's tough right there. That's next level. When you got a guy with his size, body control, beautiful handle, creates a separation. Look at this. You got a jab step, come back, pull up. That's the kind of plays at the next level that are going to make him a whole lot of money. Yante Mayton, so smooth. Half dozen for Yante Mayton, who is on the top 50 wooden watch list, a senior from Pontiac, Michigan. 15 points in the opener, 17 against San Diego State, even though he was under the weather. One of the newspaper reporters actually caught him subbing out and running right to the restroom. He wasn't feeling good. Another offensive rebound, another possession kept alive for St. Mary's. And Nahr drives in, can't score that one. That's usually his bread and butter right there. Ball screen, finger roll. Jackson inside, Obede with a bucket. Georgia with a little taste of their own medicine, a little pick and roll play of their own, hitting the fours on the roll. It's paying off for them early. I think Georgia's going to have an outstanding year in the SEC. I know they finished ninth last year, picked to finish eighth by many publications this year. It's a good team. And Turner Jackson almost redirected that thing fully, but Nahr gets another one. He's got a half dozen early on. They play until you make a defensive error, and on that play, leaving your feet was the error Nar was looking for. Not a tremendously athletic player, just extremely quick, extremely smart. Parker, three won't go. 10.46 to go, high scoring affair in the third place game from the Wood Legacy in Fullerton. 
Georgia out of the SCC out in front of the WCC favorite, St. Mary's. It's a Phil Knight birthday bash. Four teams, two championships, one time only. Let's celebrate PK-80 tonight. As good as advertised there. I mean, even if you just saw the double overtime game between Florida and Gonzaga, there you see the motion bracket, PK-80, presented by State Farm, Duke, and Florida. That's at 10.30 Eastern tonight. The PK-80 victory bracket. North Carolina and Michigan State, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. And as we bring it back to the West Coast Conference, which St. Mary's is out of, I mean, Gonzaga had a great showing. They beat Texas today, so they went 2-1 and one on their side of the bracket in the PK-80. And that's maybe why Randy Bennett was forced to say, I think Gonzaga, with my media vote, is going to be repeat champs again. Well, no coach wants to get pushed out front as the favorite. Try to keep, keep your guys focused, keep them motivated, especially when conference play starts here in a few weeks. And having that bullseye on your back, it's difficult at times. Well, St. Mary's won 29 games last year, won an NCAA tournament game, lost in the second round to Arizona. Rewarded Randy Bennett with an extension through 2027. He's never wanted to leave there. He's just one of the best coaches on the West Coast. Landell this time being guarded down there in the post by Isaac Conte, who we see for the first time in this tournament. And that's just way too deep in the post for Jock Landell to get the ball and be able to do anything about it. They got to try to get him off the block or send a double team. And Jackson for three. And we were talking to the Georgia folks before the ball game. They still said, we still have a lot of players that are under the weather today. We'll keep that in mind. Trying to shake whatever virus uh, they came down with early in this tournament. Turn around and a pull-up jumper there by Juwan Parker. Starting in place of Etorian Wilridge today. He's a redshirt senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Georgia with a one-point lead. I'm not sure if Randy Bennett's going to be real happy about this defensive effort too as well. Right now, both teams are in a decent rhythm, getting good looks. Georgia shooting the ball a lot better than they had the previous two games to start. Five to shoot. Nor to Landell, and he'll score it and be fouled by Mayton. Steve, we talked about how they handle the ball screen. Here's that ball screen with Landale and Nar. That Mayton never makes up his mind to rotate over, and Nar just drops it off to the big fella for a point blank layup, and that's the foul you don't want. The cheap little touch foul. Go ahead and let him score. But for a player like Yante Mayton, he's too valuable to pick up those little tic tac fouls. So, what are your thoughts on Landale and now his seven points being one of the best big men on the West Coast? With you know, you're from Tucson. You've seen DeAndre Ayton. I've been to a couple of Arizona games early on. I saw him. He looks like, like the second coming of Patrick Ewing. This Landell kid's outstanding, too. Well, Ayton is, is extremely talented, and he brings that with him when he steps out on the court. He doesn't, you know, rely on ball screens and spacing. He's just an impact player. What makes Landale one of the best players in, in, in the West Coast, in my opinion, is the team that he plays with and the system that he plays in. As you see him towing up a three right there. He, Something Aiton will do. Aiton yeah. will do that, too. And, and for Landale, he benefits from the system. He slides along the baseline. He's a great finisher. He understands spacing. He can pass. He's a very polished player. So two different styles, both great bigs in the West Coast. So in this game, we have two players named to the preseason Wooden Award watch list as Landell goes to the bench with seven points here. He had logged the uh, eight minutes here in this first half on three of five shooting. And what I love is the fact that he had zero starts in his first two years in the program. Another one of these Australians that they developed last season, he's coming out party, almost 17 points a game, nine and a half rebounds. Got a chance to watch and learn some very good bigs at St. Mary's play in front of him. And when it was his time to shine, he was ready. When you get good in a hurry, having to play twice or three times against Gonzaga, Jackson counted. 
boy, is he a special player. You can just see the confidence from game to game right here. Hits him with everything, including the kitchen sink, the spin, and then he finishes in the lane with the left. Turtle Jackson is on fire. They had a really good guy handling the point the last few years in J.J. Frazier. He's gone, and now it's Jackson to step in and fill those shoes. Hard to do, but he's starting to score. He's got six points. And again, his first two years in Athens, he'd only had two double-figure scoring games. He's probably going to have three in this tournament alone. Clacks him in. The guy's everywhere. Nate has the loose ball. Here come the Bulldogs out of the SEC. Jackson down to Mayton as he slipped off the screen. Double team comes to Claxton. He'll try it with a left hand in and out. Rebound Jordan Hunter, another Australian who stands 6'10". You see the respect that the Gales have for Yante Mayton. As soon as he gets the ball on the block, they're sending two players. And there's that pick and pop. Fitchner finally misses the heat check right there from beyond the arc. Claxton, we've seen him make these in the tournament. He might be 6'11", but he can stretch the floor. Outstanding transition offense right there by the Bulldogs. That drag screen, Claxton comes down, goes right to the point guard and sets it. Nice shot. And Claxton can get a little aggressive on defense. He does there, he gets called for the personal. 7-0-1 to go in the third place game from Fullerton. A look inside the uh, Fullerton Bookstore. Cal State Fullerton's NCAA Division I program in athletics has yielded more than 11 national team championships across 10 different sports. And I know the Georgia folks are super excited about being in the SEC championship and maybe getting into the college football playoff, which they, if they can beat Auburn, deserve, no doubt. But I have a Cal State Fullerton t-shirt that says undefeated in football since 1992. So take that, Georgia. Well, there's a little asterisk oh, by, your, right. by your fact there. They haven't had a program. Yeah, they dropped it. It's not undefeated. Well, <laughs> you know, that's the truth. Yeah, they used to have a great quarterback here, Damon Allen, brother of Marcus Allen, and he went on to play until he was like 110 years old in the CFL. But it was outstanding. St. Mary's used to have football, too, until around 2003, I believe the early part of this millennium. Obede now against Landell. The double team doesn't come. He recognizes that and shoots it with a left hand with one to go on the shot clock. And Obede has him with a rebound. High tower, seldom used in this tournament, and just attacks the hoop and the finger roll. I was just getting ready to say, George has been very efficient. They've gotten away from the turnovers, knocking down shots, whether they're open threes or post moves. They've done a good job to start this half. And Jordan. Jordan Ford has had a good tournament and has uh, the defensive rebound. Jordan Ford's a kid out of the Sacramento area, sophomore from Folsom, California, waiting his turn. Finally, Joe Rahan leaves, and he gets an opportunity. And Nar again. Man, he is just unafraid. Well, the thing about St. Mary's offense is everyone has to stay at home when Nar has the ball because he's actually looking to pass it, which gives him the one-on-one. -on -one. It's kind of a catch-22, and they've benefited from that from the last couple of seasons. Speaking of passing, that's a great pass over the top right there. That was Victorian Willridge. And gets it into Obede, who has uh, a half dozen now. Georgia opens up a six point advantage. Biggest of the game. And down with an athletic move. The Claxton team leader, Georgia, with 10 blocks, couldn't get that one. Not a lot of bigs have those kind of hands. He grabs that ball in traffic, gets a reverse layup. And down with nine. Coming up on five minutes to go, four point game. Willridge did not start, gets the pass into a big day again, and it's knocked away. That time, Calvin Hermanson. Haven't heard much out of Calvin in the game. 
Parker knocks down, going to work. No, he's got two more. He's got ten. Come on, Steve. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Breaking him down out here. Emmett Nard putting on a show. Goodness gracious. Timeout on the floor. Oh, by the way, his assist to turnover ratio is five to one. One of the best in the country, and he can score as well. Emmett Nahr, the first in double figures for either side here in this third place game of the Wooden Legacy. Ten points, four assists in the game. This kid has 20 assists now for the tournament. How about that? Unbelievable, but he's got a great court sense, knows where his teammates are, and all they got to do is sit back and wait on the ball, knock down shots. 58 assists in six games. Here's Mayton. Fitzner picks him up. Nahr, part of the double team. Ten to shoot. Tyree Crump, the sophomore from Bainbridge, Georgia, now going to his right, and terrific defense there by Calvin Hermanson, who, by the way, is a big-time scorer. We just haven't mentioned his name much. He hasn't even taken a shot yet in 12 minutes on the floor. Calvin Hermanson is probably one of the most special players in that program. He was a guy who was getting bench minutes. He was a role player, and all of a sudden, his role has changed to a go-to guy. And you're waiting. He's one of those guys that can get you 20 real fast. Right now, plays within himself, shoots when he's open. Rashawn Hammonds, the uh, freshman from Georgia, has drawn the defensive assignment and kept Hermanson from even attempting a field goal in the first 16 and a half minutes. Let's see, this is a totally different Georgia team, the way they're playing offensively right now. Discipline, working through their sets, getting good shots. And say they've cut down on the turnovers, and that's why they're in the lead right now. I can't even remember Hermanson touching the basketball, for goodness sakes. He's not, first gonna, half. he's not going to force anything. He's going to sit there and wait. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse laying on the baseline. I think I'd sit back and just watch Nar. Yeah. And Hermanson had the wide open three in the corner, but Nar was able to get the reverse layup. They just spread you out and they pick you apart. Tied at 29, a dozen for Emmett Nar, the redshirt senior from Australia. He averages 13 a game again. Six to shoot. Crump off the dribble. Puts it up. Landell partially blocked it. Edwards, who sat out, got it, put it back up, but they're going to wave that off. That came after a shot clock violation. And we must break one more time. Third place game from Fullerton, tied at 29. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. And by Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Naturally refreshing. Tonight at 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 Pacific after you watch Duke Florida wrap up your weekend with Sports Center. We'll take a closer look at the marquee matchup of the week. 12 in the NFL between the Saints and Rams taking place down the street from here. Plus why this season for Tom Brady might be his most impressive yet. And Duke's Marvin Bagley III headlines a packed slate of college hoops. What to take away from a wild weekend of top 10 showdowns. Sports Center on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. While we were at the break, the officials looking to see if that was in fact a shot clock violation on Georgia. And they have confirmed that they made the right call with 2.39 to go. And Georgia out in front of St. Mary's, 31-29, at least up on the scoreboard. And officially becomes 31-29. Fitzner, they've left him open, and he's got another one, his third triple. I guess you don't need the, your top three-point marksman, Hermanson, when he's hitting them. Well, for Georgia, they've got to rotate to the shooter. It's one thing to stay with Nard to make sure he doesn't get a layup, but someone from the weak side has to come over and get to the shooter. He can't stay at home. Hammonds drives in, no, and tipped in his own loose ball. Great hustle right there by Hammonds. Good take. He's a player who can do a lot of damage, has to learn how to pick his spots and be effective. I was really excited to see him play. 
One of the highest freshmen they've ever had signed to come to Athens. Landell got it blocked by Mayton, who just took it away. Well, big boy basketball, one on one under the goal. Mayton stands tall, gets the block. See if Georgia can capitalize. Coming up on 90 seconds to go in the first half of this third place game. And a pass inside to Edwards, who is under the weather on Friday. And he scores the assist for Sean Hammonds. Bulldog offense is clicking. Great one-on-one -on -one plays. Guys finishing in the lane. And Edwards wasn't even in the building on Friday. Hammonds was um, under the weather as well, but gutted it out. Nar with a rare miss. Landell there for the offensive rebound of the putback. Lucky bounce right there for the Gales as they blew a wide open layup, but Landell there to clean it all up. 11 for Landell, 12 for Nar. Under a minute to go and a turnover. Jawan Parker over the top trying to get Rashawn Hammonds. Five turnovers for Georgia. Coming up at the half, preview of North Carolina. Michigan State from the PK-80. Also up at the other bracket of the PK-80, Duke and Florida. And those Alabama-Minnesota highlights. We haven't talked about that yet. Where it was five on three, the uh, two-man advantage, the power play, whatever you want to call it. And that wild one last night. Unbelievable. Just when you think you've seen everything in college basketball. <laughs> and Alabama, I think, outscored Minnesota with just three guys on the floor. And nearly won the game. I got to check for a replay of that one. I watched that one on the app. Here's uh, Turtle Jackson, mate now. Two to shoot, step back over Fitzner, no good. And one more opportunity for St. Mary's here. And Hermanson on one rare touch here in the first half. Dribbles it out of bounds. Calvin a little upset with himself. He's got five seconds. First time he's really had the ball in his hands. And he gives it away to the press row. All right, time for Georgia to inbound it. St. Mary's to get a little more size in. Jordan Hunter will come in and replace Landell. Got to pass it in almost to half court on the move to get any kind of decent shot here. 1.6 to go. Mayton to inbound. And throws it in to Turtle Jackson, and he got it off, and it went off of the iron. Georgia 35, number 21 ranked St. Mary's 34 as we reach half here of the third place game of the Wooden Legacy in Fullerton. Bulldogs trying to get to five and one. St. Mary's trying to get to six and one. Been the Nar and Landau show so far. You're watching ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Sunday in Southern California, Championship Sunday here at the Wooden Legacy. This is the third place game. And number 21, St. Mary's trailing Georgia out of the SCC by a point. Steve Quist, Corey Williams with you. And we invite you to stay with us. Midnight Eastern tonight, ESPN2, Washington State and San Diego State. Quite frankly, Corey, Coming in, I've seen Washington State play. I saw San Diego State second half against ASU earlier this year. I thought St. Mary's Georgia was going to be the final, but instead we have them in the third place game and it's been a really good, entertaining first half. Big win for the Pac-12. Ernie Kent and those Cougars getting a little respect. and Absolutely right. A lot of people thought it was a foregone conclusion St. Mary's was going to get past them. See if they get Hermanson more touches here, and they do, and he takes his first shot of the game. It took over 20 minutes to get it, and he follows up his own miss and attacks the hoop and scores. Randy Bennett drawing up something for one of his key guys who we had not heard from in the first half. Gales take the lead on the opening possession. Hermanson scores 16 points a game. One of their top scores, and Mayton with a step back jumper in the lane. So much body control with that young man. He's talented, plays the game at a high level, but doesn't get too excited. He scored 42 points now in two plus games in this tournament. You can see why he's an all SEC first team selection and picked to be the conference's player of the year. The senior. Landau backing in on Obede and he scores. Well, you're looking at some really good big men at both ends right there. Jock 
Landell took his time, crab dribble, felt the defender, and was able to score. That's just exactly how you work it in drills during practice. St. Mary's up a point. Maiden with two bodies on him, and that defense much better there by St. Mary's. An air ball out of the hands of Maiden. Again, Georgia shot 52% in the first half as Nahr comes up short. Turtle Jackson on Emmett Nahr. He has taken full responsibility for guarding Nahr here in this half. Really been in his jersey the first couple of possessions. I'm sure Coach Fox spoke to him about trying to contain Emmett Nahr. Jackson is open on the wing in front of his bench and buries the three. And the hits just keep coming for Turtle Jackson. Whether a defender's on him or it's a spot up, he's been knocking down a lot of shots. He's got nine. One point away from another double figure game here in what is his junior season. Trying to put together three double digit scoring games in this wooden legacy. Landell backing in on Ogbede, doesn't win the battle that time. And Ogbede has the bucket, or the uh, rebound rather. George is still content to play Landell one on one. In and out, Jackson Mayton almost had the offensive rebound. Boy, that shot did everything but go down. Yeah. That was a good look. Good crossover by Nar, and the parting of the White Sea scores. They got to get a timeout as he turns it over forward with that full court pressure. Just jumping in the point guard's way and kind of gets catch Jackson off guard, gets him to shuffle his feet. He did that early in the first half where everybody's getting back on D. He stays up and wreaks a little havoc, and the Gales will get the ball right back. Through five and a half games, Georgia is giving it away 16 times a game. That was their seventh turnover. Nar. Fitzner. <laughs> He's got another one. Fitzner with four made trays in the basketball game. The kid from Francis Parker High School in San Diego. Well, you get broke down by Nar for a layup, and then you give up a turn it over and give up a three. Georgia needs a bucket here to kind of stem this little run. Parker steps in for a two. Fitzner has the loose ball. Three-point lead for St. Mary's matches their biggest of the ball game. George has been up by as many as six. The reverse by Nahr is not afraid to take it to the hoop. Boy, look at the hustle by Parker to get down and dig that ball out. Claxton had a couple of blocks in the first half. Juwan Parker making his first start of this tournament. Wilward's looking to see if he was still in bounds. Five to shoot. They're very patient on offense. Jackson pulls up for the short little five-footer. Wow. And he's in double figures for the third time in the tournament. Wow, late in the possession, ball screen. Jackson says, give me the rock. I got this. Again, his first two years on campus at Athens, he had two double-figure scoring games his freshman year against Oakland and Belmont, and he's got three here in this tournament. And down, and Mayton saying, look, I was getting an elbow, but they're going to call Mayton for the personal foul. 15 and a half to go in regulation. Third place game from Fullerton. St. Mary's starting to heat up in the second half. Nar has 14, and the Gales with a one-point advantage over Georgia. And of course, we're here in Southern California over this Thanksgiving weekend to honor the legacy of one John R. Wooden, a 10-time national champ, head coach at UCLA, the pyramid of success. Love the old videos. Some classic stuff. Didn't like calling timeouts. Hated the nickname The Wizard. The Wizard of Westwood. Hall of Fame induction back in 1973. An iconic figure right there. You talk about what all coaches aspire to have a group of young men 
leadership. Don't need to call a whole lot of timeouts because they can figure it out. That's a sign of a well-coached team. A playground man blocked by Obegbe leads to a transition bucket. That was huge. You take away a guaranteed two and get three for yourself. And despite the highlight reel, the Bulldogs are up in front by two. 45-33. Last three-pointer made by Crump. George has made four of ten, but on the other end, St. Mary's has the answer, and it's Landau again. And they're going to continue to play him straight up. And I think he'll continue to score that. He's got 15. His average is 18.3 a game. And count out and a foul. Aye. Tyree Crump. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Crump hit a triple in transition. Coach Fox calls his number again. Little stagger screen action. Got the green light, young man. Knock it down. Fouls on Emmett Nahr. That's his first. Back-to-back -back triples for Crump. He's got a half dozen. You'll see coaches that are out there taking advantage of every opportunity. You got a guy coming off the bench at three. You call his number again because it's still early in the season. You're going to need everybody. So that's what these tournaments are about, getting the most out of your team, finding out who you have, building on confidence, developing your players. Georgia by four. Their biggest lead has been six. That came in the first half. Nar kicked out. Landell. Obede defending him, and another block by Obede. Making it very difficult on Landell. And he just calls for it again. Let's do it. Pass over the top. And able to score it there is Jordan Hunter. Smart move by Jordan Hunter to play off of Landell when he has the ball on the block. You know they're going to double now. Got to be active. Move without the ball. He's had two pretty sweet assists as Landell. And Mayton. And Mayton fights through a double team. Came up short on the shot. It's going to be Bulldog basketball. A lot of times players have a tendency to stand and watch. The ball goes in, nice cut, don't stand and watch, be active, get rewarded. We talked about Jock Landell, he's got that vision out of the post. I was unfortunate in Arizona, all big men shot the ball. They didn't <laughs> pass it back out. Is Joseph Blair one of those big men? I'm not going to name any names because he's maybe watching, but yeah, they know what they did. They know what they did. Mayton drives in and picks up contact. He'll get a chance to go to the free throw line. But on a serious note, Steve, you see it all the time, especially during the tournament. The teams that move the ball have a lot of success. Let the ball do the work. See what Mayton has done at the free throw line. 14 of 15 in this tournament. He had come in, making 23 straight. Our Week 12 Monday Night Football matchup takes us to Baltimore. DeAndre Hopkins and the Texans take on Joe Flacco and the Ravens. Monday Night Countdown kicks off our coverage at 6 Eastern on ESPN. We go back to last year, Mayton had actually made 28 in a row before missing once, only once, during this tournament. Nard gets the screen high, and there's going to be a whistle. It's a difficult spot for Hightower to be in. You know the ball screen's coming. You have to make room for yourself. Otherwise, Nar is just going to come down the lane and cause all kinds of problems. But right there, the ref's calling for a little push. But that's the only way you can play that ball screen. You go under, you're going to be dead. You go over the top, you're going to be behind. You just got to get through. Keyshawn Hightower, the foul. This year, the officials have been directed to call those ball screens if the legs are too far apart. That's a, a point of emphasis this year. Nar draws contact as he penetrates. Dante Mayton picks up the personal. That's going to be his third, so that's of interest. Georgia is up four when he picks up his third. Nar rejects the screen and takes it in, and don't see a whole lot of contact. Perhaps he got him up top, but Dante Mayton not agreeing with the officials. They say the ball doesn't lie. Steve misses the free throw, so maybe it wasn't a foul. The All SEC Preseason Player of the Year. Talking with our officials, Lamont Simpson, Rick Batzel, and DJ Karstison are our officials for this uh, 
Third place game of the Wooden Legacy. Our knocks down one of two. St. Mary's is within four, 13-24 and counting. Haven't spent a lot of time at the free throw line. The Gales haven't really been there tonight because Georgia doesn't have a player with more than two fouls. They haven't committed the foul. Hey. Feed the big fella. He drives in and scores. There's no stopping him, Dante, mate. That, Steve, is what we call free lunch. You let him get the ball that deep and no double team all day long. He's got 14 in this one. Had 15 in the opener, 17 against SDSU. Nor got it blocked. Obeg Day with another one. Good team defense leads to the transition. And getting back on defense, St. Mary's, but they have to commit the foul. Cullen Neal. Nar gets what he wants off the ball screen, but thinks a little too much and puts up the floater. And then it's off to the races, and at the other end, they got to commit the foul. Great team defense, second line block. Georgia making a statement. Georgia with six blocks in the game. A five-point advantage for the Bulldogs. Time now for a fast break. What would be the best impersonation you could give me of your coach? Dig it, your team. I need you to get a rebound. Kevin Durant or LeBron James? Who are you going with? You know, uh, in terms of greatness, probably LeBron, but I like Kevin Durant. Any game day superstitions? I don't text anybody on game day except for my mom. All right. That's fast break from Yate <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good impression because we were here for their Wednesday practice and Mark Fox sounded like that. Hey, all kids can do an impersonation of coach. Now, whether they do it to his face or <laughs> that's not, right. that's a different situation. You see, after his uh, junior year last year, he, he had a bit of a knee issue and declared for the NBA draft but did not get invited to the NBA Combine and then had some problems with his knee that didn't allow him to really showcase his skills to NBA scouts and private workouts, so decides to come back, and that's why he's the All-SEC preseason first-teamer and perhaps the player of the year when it's all said and done. Top 50 wooden watch list. But no. saddled with uh, three fouls with his team up four. And I'm hopeful for that young man. Things will work out the way they're supposed to. You go when you're ready, you know, and it's about timing and giving yourself the best opportunity to have an impact once you do get to that next level. So everybody hoping he has a solid season and has good options at the end of it. He's had a solid tournament. Landau now. Obey Day. Obede's been pretty good defensively, but that time Landell wins the battle. Landell's been setting them up for that pump fake all game long, and he pulls it off right there. Obede's made a couple of key blocks, but right there got him off his feet a little bit. Yeah, Georgia has six blocks. Obede has three of them. And they're going to reward the big fella, and up offensively over Landell, who claps his hand like, God, I got to get better defensively. I like that. That's the way you take away from a great offensive player. Make them play both ends of the floor. Georgia shooting 55% in this basketball game. Mandel and Obeg Day clears the rebound. So a nice little jump hook right there. You can see Georgia going to continue to play straight up in the post. Georgia not missing many shots in the second half, and you know that's got Randy Bennett fuming right now. They make another one. That's Tyreek Crump with another three-pointer. Boy, Georgia is looking so impressive right now. Good defense, leading to good offense. Crump with three triples. And Nar just switched that Georgia defense. Mark Fox can't be happy with that. Well, he has to live with that. I mean, you've got two options. You double and open up the three-pointers, which everyone in the blue jersey can knock down. Or you hope Emmett Nar starts to get tired and maybe makes a few mistakes. But right now, I don't think that's too likely. Claxton handles inside of 11 minutes to go this third place game. Obey Day with the left hand. It's turned into quite a battle on both ends. Obey Day against Landell. I like the officials letting them play. Hermanson, if they could find a way to get him going. It only took two shots. Feed the post. Landell says, Obey Day, get off me. Backs in on him, got position, and you can tell with that position he was going to score that in the lane. You let him come to a strong hand, no double team. He's up there all by himself at some 11, 12, maybe even 13 feet releasing the ball. Yeah. That's all day long. 
They're going to keep exploiting that. Again, Mayton is on the bench and will be for the foreseeable future with three personals. Almost halfway home in the second half. George is buying some valuable minutes from that young man right there. Crump as he not, takes another three. And Cullen Neal drives, and Cullen Neal draws contact. That takes us to a break. 9.56 to go. Third place game from Fullerton. St. Mary's trailing by four. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. It's cross-conference chaos of the best kind. The Big Ten ACC Challenge starts Monday. Meantime, we're in the second half of the third place game featuring number 21, St. Mary's and Georgia. The Bulldogs lead by four. We're inside Titan Gym on the campus of Cal State Fullerton. Cal State Fullerton has 20, 278,000 alums. Among them, Kevin Costner, former pro basketball players, Bruce Bowen and Cedric Sabalos. And if I ever got a chance to meet Kevin Costner, I'd ask him, if you ever go to Ichabod's, it used to be a little bar on the corner of Chapman and State College. It was a just like an old Wild Wild West one, Southern uh, California. If I ever saw Kevin Costner, I'd ask him for my $8 back for Waterworld. <laughs> I'm really upset about that still. Ichabod's would uh, put dirt bags to shame. Wait a minute now. That's a, that's a pretty <laughs> bold statement there, Mr. Quist. Cullen Neal was at the free throw line. The transfer from Old Miss before that, transferred from New Mexico to Old Miss. His dad was the head coach at New Mexico before being released in the offseason. Hey, we haven't mentioned Her uh, Hammond's name much. He was under the weather the other day. He's been kind of the quiet guy here. He's taken two shots. He's missed them both. He hasn't scored yet. So you figure if either Hammonds or Hermanson for their respective teams can get going, the momentum could swing in one direction. Right now, and Ordnar can just keep taking it to the hole. The go-to guys for both squads are delivering, so the role players are just got to sit back and get in where they fit in. They don't want to force anything on a night like that. Even Turtle Jackson, who can stroke it, hasn't really taken a lot of shots in the second half. That's true. Let your guys play. And foul to the end to shoot and count it. Jawan Parker, who got the start today. Look at a chance at three the hard way. Big time move right there. Jab step, gets open, blows by the defender. If you're gonna reach, make sure they don't get the shot off. Just great upper body strength. Park will have a chance to get that bonus free throw. Mike Edwards spells Nicholas Claxton. Parker puts Georgia up by four. Both teams want to stay disciplined. Like I said, both Landale, Mayton playing well for their teams. But it might come down to the role players. St. Mary's just needs some defensive stops. They played poorly defensively. Fitzner and made three threes now drives in and scores in the lane. Got to get those every once in a while to keep the D honest. 14 for Evan Fitzner. Nar and Landell, 19 apiece. Fitzner with uh, 14. Again, Hermanson has taken two shots. He averages 16 a game. Mayton is back in there with a three fouls. Drives in the up and under shot with the left hand. Edwards did a great job of posting up and giving Mayton the space to go one on one. You've got to be a threat. Don't be a guy that the defense can help off of. And right there, Mayton got all the way to the rim. His NBA audition tape continues, and this time he draws Landell, and again, a third assist as Landell feeds a streaking Tanner Krebs for the bucket. They're running a motion clinic right now. George has got to do a better job. Of, I know the officials are trying to take away the bumping of cutters, but you can't let a guy cut right in front of your face down the lane. That'll go for two. That's a two, and still Tyree Crump right around that perimeter has uh, been downright nasty. A dozen for Crump. And their best shooter from distance. Fitzner, and he misses. Just his second miss. And 
and Crump. Yaten, good passing inside to Edwards, and it was blocked by Fitzner. Edwards got it back and can't score. Boy, two point blank looks right there. Mayton did the right thing, gave it up to his teammate. But you got to finish that. Nar dribbles. Nar picks up contact. And that takes us to a break. Boy, my heart rate's up. I don't know about yours, Corey. That was quite a fun segment. 7.05 to go. Georgia by four over the West Coast Conference standing Gales of St. Mary's. Well, this tournament, the Wooden Legacy, has showcased some fabulous individual talent over the years. Let's stroll down memory lane. O.J. Mayo. I hadn't heard that name in a while. James Hart. And Lonzo Ball last year, Denzel Valentine a couple of years ago, and Nigel Williams Goss nearly won a national championship for Gonzaga after transferring from UW and add these two names to that list. Absolutely, both of these young men have bright futures and they showed up big time for their teams today. Back and forth, great action, good offense. Gonna come down to who D's up, two or three stops in a row could make the difference today. Yeah, and St. Mary's proving they haven't been able to make many stops. Georgia shooting 53% in the game, 55% in the second half. And if Georgia gets out of here with a win, it'll be because they've limited turnovers and their bench has come up big. 21 bench points already for Georgia of their 65 overall points. That is huge as they mix things up and go to a zone here. St. Mary's has a lot of shooters, but we'll see if they can create a good look. They've got to stop that penetration. They feed the post. Landell against Yaten. Got it back. He put it up. Two more. He's got 21. Boy, he's got such a big frame. Not too many people are going to knock Dante Mayton backwards. Knocked him off and he's able to get it back and score. A double double for Doc Landell. 21 points, 10 rebounds. Tyree Crump. Trump's been a big reason why Georgia has all those bench points. He's got 12 off the bench here for Mark Fox's club. And a foul on the long rebound, and they got Claxton again. You say, what I do? Great defense right there by Calvin Hermanson. He didn't fall for the pump fake, forced a tough shot. Gales were able to run down the rebound. That's a key defensive stop for them. Same thing, trying to tie this game up. And you had just mentioned that they need a couple of stops. And they get a big one right there. Yeah, 52% is just way too high. You're not going to beat anybody letting somebody make half of their shots. Most coaches want to get everything under 40 to have a chance. This is like uh, an NBA G League game right now <laughs> with all those guys. Georgia back in their man-to-man. -man. They only went zone for the one possession. Nar shakes a couple of defenders, change hands. They made it a tough shot for Georgia. Parker earned the start over Etorian Wilridge. Tishon Hightower coming up on 10 to shoot. Gets the screen high by Obegde, drives and count it! Wow! I'm a little undecided about that play right here. It's good one on one. I don't know if this is luck or skill, but he takes it right at the big fella as the shot clock winds down and gets the foul and the roll. Jock Londale can't believe it, but that was a nice little bit of improv improvisation right there by Hightower. Hightower, just a freshman. Can't complete the three-point play. In a big game like this, you end up with the ball in your hands. Five seconds to go out at the top of the key. You got to make something happen. And it worked out right there. Four-point game, Nar over the top to Landell. Out to Fitzner. Nar got his defender in the air, drives underneath pass to Landell. He put it up and scores two more. All you have to do is wait on the ball. Emmett Nar will hook you up. Landell slides the baseline. Nar penetrates, fakes out two guys, and gives him a brilliant little shovel pass. Landell's made 11 of 19 shots. He's also got 11 boards. Lead is two for Georgia. Trump from Mayton, he came up short, and now a chance to tie for St. Mary's. 
Good perhaps take the lead. Good contest by La Londell on that one. Right Landell. Back, right back to the big fella on the cut. <laughs> He's got a fourth assist as he finds Krebs for the second time in this half. Contesting shots, throwing dimes. This is what it's about. Crunch time, tie game. Even at 67 with 4.15 and counting. Team pick to win the WCC over Gonzaga has drawn even with Georgia out of the SEC. Crump to get his team back the lead. He came up short. There's another stop for St. Mary's. Krebs is left open on the right wing. No, Landell trying to get his 12th rebound. He got tangled up with Parker. And it's going to be St. Mary's basketball. 3.53 to go, even. Don't go anywhere. We're coming back for the dramatic conclusion next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Las Vegas. Explore now at visitlasvegas.com. By Gildan. Love your dad, but don't wear his underwear. Gildan. Every thread counts. And by Dr. Scholz. What a treat, Corey Williams, to watch Eric Nahr, or Emmett Nahr, rather, go to work from the point guard position. Well, he understands the game. He understands spacing. He knows how to use the ball screen. He's the kind of guy that literally makes everyone else better, his vision. But he's not afraid to call his own number. If he gets the defender behind him, he'll take it all the way in. And you got to pick your poison. You're going to give him layups, or you're going to give other guys layups and threes. And right now, Georgia just has not solved the riddle of Emmett Nahr. What do you do on that initial ball screen to slow them down? On that line, you don't see the fact that he hasn't turned it over. 19 points, seven assists, no turnovers. As a matter of fact, St. Mary's has not turned the basketball over in the second half. And we're under four minutes to go. Here's Fitzner getting position on Obede, and that went in and out. Who wants it more at this point? We've been tied seven times. We've had 19 lead changes in this third place game. And for me, Steve, Georgia's got to be disciplined and play through Mayton down the stretch as he misses a chippy right there. Transition for St. Mary's. And Nahr slows it up. Redshirt senior from Australia. Missing his backcourt mate, Rayhan from last year. Joe graduated. Defensively, they're not as solid. They go back to the well, Landell. Obede with a left hand over the window for two more. He's got 25. St. Mary's going to the well, going to ride the big fella down the stretch, and he delivers. Once again, they're giving him the whole world. He's got the crab dribble. He's got plenty of time. No double teams coming. 50 points in the paint. I mean, San Diego State against Georgia got a lot of points in the paint as well. Bulldogs will need to clean that up in SEC play. Jackson, no. This would be a big stop for St. Mary's, and instead, Georgia gets the ball back. Good hustle there by the Bulldogs to get it back, reset. Try to see if you can get something to the basket. Hammonds to Mayton, and he bounced it out of bounds to him. Just not a good attempt at a post entry. Take your time. Ball's way too important to throw risky passes like that. Let Mayton get set and then give your post entry. Only Georgia's second turnover of the second half. And again, St. Mary's hasn't turned it over in the second half. Trying to take a four-point lead. Nahr lost it. Fitzner has it back. Two minutes to go in this third-place game. Landell with 25 points on Ogbede, who now tightens up a little bit, but still Landell getting the position. Out to Fitzner. Two to shoot. Fitzner put it on the floor. Got it off just in time. Landale almost got the defensive rebound, and it's going to be St. Mary's ball. They may look at this. It did look like it went off a player's foot. I think they're going to huddle up. and Sure, they can. It's under two minutes. You might as well check it. Right there, you see the push off. No call, and the ball goes to the corner. That's certainly not going to be the angle that we'll be able to tell by. Might have been. Obede's hand, we'll see here. Oh, no, you know what? I think it's I think it's Landell's hand, to be honest with you. Landell or Hermanson. Yep. We will
we'll see what the three wise men come up with, but this is a big call. Bodies hit the deck. And you can't really tell there, so that's not going to be a good angle. Looks like Hermanson at the last second goes down and tries to get it. There you see Ogbede's hand on right. it. Right. Now you're going to see Hermanson come in and try to grab it himself. Ogbede put his hand back on it, though. Yep, right there. But then eh, it's Hermanson's going to be off the back of hand. Yeah, Hermanson. Looks like it's Hermanson's left hand is the last one to touch it, but we'll see. Or is it, I meant my, uh, or is it, Land I think it's Landell's. No, you're right, Hermanson. Yeah, I think George is going to get this basketball down, too. Yep, Georgia got it. That was a pretty easy one to spot. Don't mind them taking the time as long as they get it right. Great camera work there by the crew. 69-67. Give our thumbs up to the officiating. You got it right. One of the few times I agree <laughs> with the refs. Normally well, they that. got it wrong at first, but we're able to <laughs> get it right upon further review. Plenty of time. It's not do or die, but Georgia wants to get a good shot here. They had time in the huddle. We'll see what Coach Fox has drawn up. Hammonds. 90 seconds to go in this third place game. Somebody's going to go home one and two. Someone will go home two and one. For St. Mary, it's been a long time since they lost back-to-back -back games. Turtle Jackson. Nathan, three to shoot, puts it on the floor, launches, missed off the front of the rim, and Hammonds came out of nowhere to knock that one away from Nar. He was about to corral it. It's going to be St. Mary's basketball. Two-point lead. And they're going to check this one again here, just to make sure one more time. And I thought they should have initially checked it. It didn't seem like it was that opening shut. Nar. I can't really tell there. Turtle Jackson got in the way. Nope, they took a quick look and said, confirm. Yeah, Hammond's can came from underneath to knock it away. And Georgia will have to drop back, play some solid defense. They're going to get the ball, obviously. There's a couple more possessions left in the game. But it's a big difference getting the ball down two versus down four or five. St. Mary's has only led the game for a little over nine minutes. Game in which we've been tied seven times. We've had 20 lead changes. Nard to the hole again. He missed. Obede with another rebound. Wow, that play had paid off all game long, just not enough on that layup. Nine rebounds for Derek Obede. Chance to tie. And it's good. Parker gives us our eighth tie of the basketball game. Great screen and roll with Yante Maiden. He rolls and takes everybody with him. Parker's able to knock down the high post jumper. And now the Bulldogs have to get a stop and may have a chance to steal this one here. Nine seconds difference to the shot clock and the game clock and Nard to a wide open Landell for the slam dunk. The doctor is in. He breaks the defense down and delivers the best assist of the night. Takes two people <laughs> on a magical ride and says, look, Ma, no ball. Eight assists for Nar, none bigger than the last one. Good screen roll, they respect it. Parker says, I'll take those from the free throw line. But at the other end, Emmett Nar takes the entire Georgia team to the rack and then says, Abracadabra, I don't have it anymore. Jock Landale with the easiest two points of the night. That was a beautiful play right there. Oh, Obede lost his man. He had been playing admirable defense down there in the post. Knows he's worked super hard trying to control Landale, who has a season high 27 points on 13 of 21 shooting. So George has got it. And to his credit, we talked about where he camps out 27 points in the lane, 
I'm willing to bet not many more of them from more than five or six feet away. 11 boards in the paint. He's contested some shots and, and changed some things. He's just been a force. But he's got great hands, and Emmett Nahr and he have been working together all game long. Well, it's the 19th annual Big Ten ACC Challenge. Wednesday, we'll have Michigan taking on the ninth-ranked Tar Heels in Chapel Hill at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's number one Duke in Indiana from Assembly Hall. It'll be another great night of hoops on ESPN and the ESPN app. Georgia called a 30-second timeout and then recalled a full timeout here. Lots of championship games coming up as we conclude Feast Week here on ESPN, presented by Lowe's. Wooden Legacy at uh, 12 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2. And, of course, the two different bracket championships, victory and motion in the PK-80. That's a great lineup of basketball right there. I'll be flipping back and forth all night. Hoping that Phil Knight lives to be 160 so we can do it again. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, here, if you're Georgia, for my taste, you've got the athletes, you've got the one-on-one -on -one players. I say you do something aggressive to the rim to try to get fouled. You make a shot, you're good to go. You get fouled, you got some free throws. But what you don't want to do is be in a situation where you miss an open jumper and then have to foul. Try to get something going to the rim, high percentage. This would be a big stop. Randy Bennett has been stewing over his defense the last two games. Can they stop Georgia and get a win here? Jackson, who's probably going to be on the all-tournament team, drives to the hole, lays it up, and scores it. Oh, big time. 13 for Jackson, and now St. Mary's can win it. The magic man, here we go. Landell sets the screen high, tries to. Nar puts it up, can't score it. Crump has the board, and we are going to overtime here in the third place game at the Wooden Legacy. Thanks to, of all people, Turtle Jackson. That was an amazing possession right there by Georgia. They set a double screen. Turtle Jackson turns the corner and realizes I can get all the way to the rim, and I'll tell you, the referees called it clean. There was some contact on this layup, but not enough to draw a foul. But Landale leaves his man. Turtle Jackson, oh, high off the glass. <laughs> and then to finish with a defensive stop. But I thought he was going to try to dunk this. Ball gets out of his hand off the glass, and we've got overtime. Turtle Jackson has emerged on the scene here for Georgia in this tournament. And there you saw a chance to win for St. Mary's. And we have five added minutes of basketball here from the Wooden Legacy. In the game prior, St. Joe's got a win. They will finish in seventh place. They beat Sacramento State, who ends in eighth place. After this, the fifth place game. Fullerton and Harvard, but first things first, deciding the third place game between Georgia and St. Mary's. Well, I got to say, I totally understand the idea right there for St. Mary's on their last possession. You got to let somebody else beat you. You let Turtle Jackson come off the screen and you hedge him, you're going to have problems with Yante Maiton on the roll. So stay at home, make someone else beat you. And that was just a heck of a play right there by Jackson. Again, Calvin Hermanson only two points on two shots in this game for St. Mary's. And Rashawn Hammonds took two shots. He missed them both. He has not scored. We'll see if either one of those guys can maybe step up here in this overtime and be the difference for their respective clubs. Georgia controls the tip. Day three of the tournament, overtime game. Who has what left in the tank? Obede throws it down with the left hand. Well, he's seen some really outstanding post play tonight. Obede is a rebound shy of a double-double. He's got 10 points. Becomes the fifth Bulldog in double figures here. <laughs> 21 lead changes. Nine ties. We're going to be tied for a tenth time. <laughs> it's a video. He's in video game mode right now. He's got 29. It's just automatic. Press the A button, and it's two points. <laughs> <laughs> and he comes out high. Crump, no. And Nars got the rebound. 
They, they almost came down with that offensive rebound. We haven't seen a lot of offensive boards here in crunch time. Guys doing a great job of being fundamentally sound. There's a nice pass. <laughs> There's your A button. Push, 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 push. All you got to do, give it to him. He's got the cheat code working right now. He can't be stopped. And they have not double teamed him. I think you've got to start to look to double team him and take your risk on a three pointer. 31 and 11 for Landell. Parker dribbling through traffic and draws Good contact move. from Landell and scores it. Parker hit that big free throw line jumper and then right here, very smart play. Get him in the air and he says, you know what? If I can just get a piece of you, still got it up to the rim. That might be the play of the game because it gives Landell his fourth personal. He'll have to be a little more timid here in the final 332. Oh, no, no, no. Parker gives Georgia the lead. 14 for Parker. Yonte Maiden now on Jock Landale. We'll see if St. Mary's ends up finishing the possession there. Oh, crossover down the lane. Kick out. Fitzner is open on the wing for three. He's grown cold, but there's Hermanson. Offensive rebound and sticks the put back. And Steve, you were wondering when he was going to show up. This is a guy who will average double digits in WCC play. He's just been kind of chilling in the cut all night, but a very big play right there. Only got four points. But St. Mary's out in front by one. It's our 23rd lead change of this third place game. Crump drives, pulls up over Krebs, and scores it. And we got another lead. And Krebs has had a hard time staying with Crump all night. He's played some good minutes, but just a little too quick off the dribble for him right there. That's a nice shot. Georgia leads it 78-77. Fitzner with Claxton in the length in front of him. Nar has it. Two and a half to go in the overtime. Landell with a season-high 31 against Mayton now. Landell and Mayton, that's great defense by Mayton. Made him come up short. Mano Imano right there on the post, the two big men. Obede is gassed. He's out of the game. He's on the bench. I'm gassed just watching. Good defense so far. See how they finish up this possession. Big opportunity for Georgia. Drive by Jackson. No, Claxton was skying in for the offensive rebound, and it was last touch by St. Mary's. And they're asking. Well, look at all five St. Mary's players. Are they asking for a replay? And I, I think they're going to get it. They're going to get a, an official review. They're saying that Georgia touched it last. Yeah, I, I think Hammonds comes over and knocks that out with his. No, not Hammonds, but Claxton. Claxton comes yeah, flying in. Yeah, and it might even have been Mayton with his left hand on that as well. You'll see Claxton come in with his right hand. Mayton's in there with his left hand. Oh no! No. No, well, Fitzner. Fitzner with the right hand could have been the last guy on the ball. This will tell us right here. Boy, this is some great camera work. Yeah. yeah, I think that's Fitzner's hand. But either way, you've only got five seconds to shoot as you didn't draw iron. So it'll be Georgia basketball after the official review. Fitzner touching it last. 156 to go, one point advantage, and as you pointed out, just five to shoot here. And we'll see who gets it. Everybody from Georgia has been shooting it well. Claxton. Claxton turns around and misses. But an offensive rebound by Mayton and a fresh 30-second shot clock. Big time board right there. Yante Mayton just goes and gets the ball. Jackson moving against Nor. St. Mary's defense at the end of the game could not make the one stop they needed to make. It's kind of been the theme for them in this tournament. And a three on the way from Crump, and he hits it. That stretches the lead out to four. If you go under a 
against Crump, he will bury you. They got to learn that lesson. He's had a hot hand in the second half. He averages less than six points a game. He has a team leading 17 for the Georgia Bulldogs. Nar drives with a right hand and scores that one. Wow, it's a tough it, basket. Yeah, he makes it look so easy. Just slows down enough to make sure the defender's behind him. Takes it right to the rim. St. Mary's is going to need another stop. Timeout, Georgia. They'll have one left. We take a break. Bulldogs will have the basketball to two-point lead when we return for the conclusion of overtime here in Fullerton. A career-high 17 for Tyree Crump leading the Georgia Bulldogs. Once he got it going, they kept coming to him, and he did not hesitate. Found his stroke, dialing it in from distance. Crump with some huge baskets for the Georgia Bulldogs here in the second half. He's been the man for them, knocking down shots. Guys going to the screen, he's made a pay every time. It's been fun to watch the WCC and uh, the SEC lock this uh, Thanksgiving break as I think about it. That double overtime game, Gonzaga and Florida, and then this thing right here. I say it needs its own tournament. Yeah, I mean, St. Mary's, 21st ranked team. We're, we're gonna, the WCC SEC challenge, I like, I like that. It. It's a lot of C's, but we can take it, we can deal with it. We got Portland coming up on ESPNU after this against uh, DePaul in the PK-80. You can see another WCC team under the direction of Terry Porter. St. Mary's needs to get a stop, but more importantly, secure the rebound. Parker earned the start, bumped off of his defender, and a foul will be called. And that's an offensive foul on Parker. So, so yeah, he was getting Hermanson off of him. So obvious. You drive it to the baseline. If you can't beat the defender, you just got to do that on your own. But to use that inside arm and create space right there in front of the official. Here's Nar and an opportunity to draw us even for a 12th time. Or we might have our 26th different lead change of the game and a foul in the post. It's about really the only way you can handle Jacques Landell, who's having a career night with 31. Nate, and that's his fourth. He picked up his third when his team was up four midway through the second half. Deontay Maiden had the right idea. You would want to stop giving up that great real estate to Jock Landale, but you can't use your knee to dislodge the post player. Landale is a 79% free throw shooter and misses. They got a foul. Yes, they do with 17 seconds left and a reach in foul there by Jordan Ford, the sophomore from Folsom. Ford's another guy who's having a great tournament coming in in a quiet game, only a couple of points after scoring 27 in the first two games for St. Mary's. They're going to learn a lot about themselves in this tournament, how they need to defend better moving forward if they want to win the West Coast Conference. Jock Landale had one in the bonus, wasn't able to convert. This is a one and one, and Turtle Jackson will convert. That was only the 17th foul for St. Mary's. 14 for Turtle Jackson. Made or missed, there's enough time for the quick two, yep. and then set your defense. He made them both. Look at that body, English. He knows. He got a fortunate roll there. He's having a great tournament. All right. St. Mary's needs the quick two. Fitzner, he's going to try the three to pull him within one. No. And rebound out of bounds. And sticking with St. Mary's. But there's only 4.3 to go. I'm surprised they didn't get it inside to Landau there. And they'll call a timeout. Yeah. You want to try to get that. The clock is your enemy at that point. So a quick two or even something quick that results in a foul. Get the two points while the clock is stopped, yeah. and then you get a chance to set your defense. But two possession game, doesn't really matter if you get the three or the two, you still need something else. It took them entirely too long to get that shot. Did not need that three-pointer, and in jeopardy now of dropping to five and two and losing back-to-back -back games is 21st ranked St. Mary's. And these, these holiday tournaments over Thanksgiving have taken a real bite out of ranked teams, have they not? Absolutely, I mean, like I said, 
guys get up for these games. They know that you're ranked. They, well, they got something to prove. Georgia felt like they let a game get away from them here in this tournament. You can set things right, but St. Mary's is every bit as good as advertised. Just some of these other teams need to get some consideration as well. But everyone's going to benefit come March, win or lose, from these Thanksgiving tournaments. Yeah, this, uh, you know, a win or a loss to St. Mary's is going to not be viewed as something that's going to hurt you. Georgia um, may come away from this game. This may be looked at as a quality win by the selection committee. The last time St. Mary's has lost back-to-back -back games, they lost three in a row to end the 2015 season. In jeopardy here. Fitzner has it over. Jackson came up short. Landau has it. Bangs it off the screen. But that's it. Off the window it went. And the Georgia Bulldogs are going to win it 83 to 81. Landau will finish with 33. And the Bulldogs will finish in third place in the Wooden Legacy off to one of their best starts in a long while. Georgia is 5 and 1 while St. Mary's drops to 5 and 2. Big time game right there for Jock Landale. He scored all those points but couldn't make the free throws to bring it tight, but they wouldn't have been in that position had it not been for the great performance he had in the first place. Mark Fox's team was under the weather for the second consecutive time and they get big time performances at a crump with a career high 17. Mayton had 16. Jackson had 15, Parker had four, Obede had 10 and nine rebounds. And coming up tonight, Malachi Flynn and Devin Watson, San Diego State against Washington State. What a great game. That's going to be great guard play out front. Two teams trying to go home with a little bit of hardware. That's for the Wooden Legacy Championship, Washington State against San Diego State. That game at midnight Eastern. Stay tuned next for Portland against DePaul at Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Portland, part of the PK-80. It's been our pleasure serving you. For Corey Williams, I'm Steve Quist. Good night from Fullerton.